So, this class I will discuss the another next uh, earth pressure theory or the second earth pressure theory that is Coulomb's earth pressure theory. In the previous classes, I have discussed about the uh, Rankine's earth pressure theory and here I will discuss the Coulomb's earth pressure theory. Now, what are the assumptions that, that the backfill is dry, cohesionless, homogeneous, isotropic. So, these were the same assumptions for the Rankine's theory, but this uh, theory can also be applied for the C5 soil okay, under the Coulomb's theory, although the Rankine's theory also extended for the C5 soil. Then the backfill surface is planar and can be inclined, because initially in the Rankine's theory, the backfill surface was horizontal, but later on it has been extended for the inclined also. So, but here this theory the backfill surface can be uh, planar or can be inclined, it can be horizontal or can be inclined also. But in the Rankine's theory, the our wall or the back of the wall is always vertical, okay. but here in this theory for the Coulomb's theory, the back of the wall can be inclined also. Okay. So, that back of the wall can be inclined. And another one, the failure surface is um, plane failure surface or linear failure surface. So, that means, if this is the wall, as I mentioned, the failure surface will be the planar, okay, the linear. In the Rankine's also failure surface is um, linear and it is always pass passing through the hill of the wall. Then the others are next assumptions as that in the Rankine's theory, we show that, that the point a direction of the um, force is parallel to the backfill surface. Okay. So, now that means it is, uh, so that means if this is the wall and if it is perfectly horizontal. So, this is the P A direction for the Rankine's, okay. but for the Coulomb. So, even if the wall is horizontal, so it will act at a angle of delta. What is delta? So, delta is the friction angle between soil and the wall. So, that is the another uh, um, difference between the Rankine's and Coulomb's. In the Rankine's theory, it is assumed that wall is smooth, perfectly smooth. That means, delta value is 0, but here the delta value that the friction between wall and the uh, soil is also incorporated. So, it is assumed that there is a friction value delta and this P A will act with an angle delta with the with the normal to the wall. So, that means, this line is the normal to the wall and P A is acting with an angle delta with this normal. That is for the Coulomb's, this is for the Rankine's. If it is inclined backfill, suppose this is the inclined backfill. Okay. So, as per the Rankine's, so this is the P. P is also acting I with, a, with angle I to the horizontal. Okay. So, that means, this as per the Rankine's theory, this P A is always, always parallel to the backfill, but if for the incline also, this this is making an angle delta with the normal to the wall. So, this is Rankine. and this one is the Coulomb's and this is also Rankine. Okay. So, these are the uh, difference between the Rankine's and the Coulomb and always this sliding wedge is considered to be rigid body. Sliding wedge means as I mentioned that when there will be a planar failure surface. So, this wedge, so this, this is the wall, this is the wall and this is the failure plane. So, this wedge will slide along this failure plane. So, this 
OH is considered to be rigid. Okay? This is a rigid body. So, these are the assumptions considered by the Coulombs. Okay? Now, first uh, we will consider for the uh, active case and then we will consider for the for the passive case. Okay. So, this is the wall and as I mentioned now wall can be inclined also. Okay. So, here this wall is making an angle alpha with the horizontal and beta the making an angle beta with the vertical. So, alpha will be 90 minus beta. Okay. So, this is the wall surface which is no longer vertical which can be inclined also and this is the backfill surface which can be also inclined and this is the failure wedge. Okay. So, this is the planar surface, this is the this is the planar failure surface. So, this O edge is rigid body which is sliding along this surface. So, now if I consider this O edge and what are the forces acting? Okay? The forces acting is the weight of this O edge. So, if we draw the this force diagram, so this is the weight of the O edge which is acting. Now, this reaction of this soil because this O edge is sliding along this uh, failure surface. So, there will be a reaction force because here there will be a normal force and then the, there will be a uh, this uh, along this line there will be a slab, uh, shear force also. So, that means a shear, shear stress this is normal stress shear stress. So, this is the resultant force. So, resultant force is making an angle theta minus phi. Okay? So, you, you can see that this angle is if I draw this line parallel to this one, this angle is also theta. Okay? So, this is making an angle theta minus phi. So, this is the theta minus phi with the vertical. So, this angle theta minus phi with the vertical. So, this r is making an angle theta minus phi with the vertical. Okay? So, now what uh, uh, another force? Another force is the P A active earth pressure. So, P A is making an angle delta minus phi with the vertical, okay? delta minus uh, alpha minus delta. So, if you draw this line, so that means this is also alpha. So, this is also alpha. So, your this angle is 90 degree. So, this total one is also alpha. Okay? So, this is this angle is alpha and this one is the 90 degree. So, you can write this total one is also alpha. This total one is also alpha okay? and this is making an angle with the vertical. This is the xi xi is equal to alpha minus delta. So, that is why it is alpha minus delta angle it is working. So, that means the r is making an angle theta minus phi with the vertical and p a is making an angle delta minus alpha minus delta with the vertical. So, this is the force diagram of all the three forces. Now, what I will do that actually uh, I want to determine the weight of this wedge. So, before that if I take the force polygon, this force polygon. So, I can write that P A sin this is theta minus phi, theta minus phi that will be equal to w, w and this angle is 180 degree minus alpha minus delta or this will be the minus delta minus theta minus phi. Okay? So, similarly I can write w divided by sin 180 degree minus alpha minus theta plus phi 
plus delta. Okay. So, I can write from this first polygon. So, now this is the angle. So, finally, P A will be W into sin uh, theta minus phi 180 degree minus alpha minus theta plus phi plus delta. So, here only variable is the theta. Okay. Other things are known. We know the alpha because this is the angle this wall is making that is fixed. Your um, uh, phi value is the property that is fixed. Delta value it is also fixed. So, only variable is the phi because depending upon this phi, this P A value will change. Okay. So, now we have to optimize this P A value. So, how we will optimize that? And before I going to optimize that, by this one we can calculate the weight of the wedge because this weight of the wedge is required. So, I will calculate the weight of the wedge. Weight of the wedge will be the half this gamma into A. So, A is the half into the weight of the wedge is equal to half into gamma area is A C into B D. Okay. So, this is the weight of this wedge. So, A C will get with this expression and B D will get with this expression. So, these expressions are coming from the geometry. So, you will get that because a c will you will get again from the a c by because this is a c. So, a c divided by sin because this is also alpha. So, I can write from this uh, triangle that a c divided by sin i plus alpha that is equal to a b this is a b and this angle. Okay? This angle will be this is your this angle is theta minus i okay, divided by sin theta minus i. So, this is theta. So, this angle will also be this angle will also be theta the total angle again this is i. So, this angle is i. So, this value this angle is finally, theta minus i. So, these are from the geometry, you can see this geometry. So, finally, this is the expression. So, A C I can write with this way and B D also from this triangle, this is the B D and this angle B D B D is the A B is this one and this angle we know this is is your this is the alpha and theta. So, this angle will be 180 degree minus alpha plus theta. Okay. So, from here I can also get an expression for B D and A B. So, A B also H this is the A B is this one and this is the H this angle is alpha. So, if I know the H if I know the alpha I can get the A B also A B also H by sin alpha because you know that from here A B H by A B is equal to sin alpha from this triangle if I extend this triangle. So, this is h is the height by a b is equal to sin alpha. So, I can write a b is equal to h by sin alpha. Okay. So, all this value will get from this uh, from this geometry and then finally, we will get the w and this is the expression of the w. So, that expression I will put here. So, I will put this w expression here from the this ex final expression I will put here. So, we will get a p a expression where except theta all values are fixed. So, only variable is theta. So, we have to optimize that. Okay. So, uh, we will optimize okay, by minimizing this. So, making so when we are talking about the active so, we have to minimize that. When you are talking, uh, uh, sorry, when you are talking about the active, we have to maximize. When you are talking about the passive, we have to minimize. So, in the case of active, it, it is minimization, uh, maximization. And when the passive, it is minimization.
Okay. So, in, in case of so both the cases, you have to make d p a w by d theta and make it 0, because this is the minimization and maximization process. So, and only variable is the theta. So, in remember that in case of active, it is maximization, in case of passive, it is minimization. In case of active, we choose that theta value such that we will get the maximum force, and in case of passive, we will get the minimum force. Okay. And so, finally, after minimum uh, maximization, we will get the expression of k a like this. Okay. So, this is the expression of k a and finally, the force is similar to the Rankine's theory, but only the k a expression is different. Now, what is the difference in the Rankine's and the Coulomb? As I mentioned in Rankine's, the i value is 0, delta value is 0 and wall is making wall is perfectly vertical. So, alpha value is 90 degree. So, if you put this value in this expression, you will get the same 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. So, if you put these values here, then you will get this expression. Okay. So, it is this is the this is the all the things are incorporated in the Coulomb's theory. Okay. Now, sometimes this k expression is also written in a different form. So, I am giving that form. So, you, the k is sometimes written in this form also, this k you can write this form also. In another way, k is written cos square phi minus beta cos square beta cos delta plus beta 1 plus root over sin phi plus delta, then sin phi minus i, this is cos delta plus beta, then cos i minus beta, that is whole square. So, it is written in this form also, okay. either you can use this one or you can use this one. So, this is for the active. Similarly, for the passive, the similar way we can get the w value, but here there is these angles are changing. Initially, for the active, this is making alpha minus delta and this is theta minus phi. Now, this angle alpha plus delta, this is theta plus phi in case of passive. So, again we will get the p, we will get the w, the same expression we will put there and then we will this is we minimize uh, this one. So, this will be the minimization and then finally, we will get this expression of k a. Now, again if you put this value here, we will get same the Rankine's k p. Okay? And again I am writing this k p can be written in another form that is cos square phi plus beta this is cos square beta cos delta minus beta 1 minus okay, root over sin phi plus delta sin phi plus i, then cos delta minus beta cos i minus beta that is equal to square. So, either you can use this one or this one, both are the same expression in different form. Okay. So, this way you can use this Coulomb's theory also to calculate the earth pressure. So, when I solve the retaining wall problem, in that time I will use this Coulomb's theory and I will show you how you can determine the earth pressure. I, even I have not solved the problem for inclined back field also, that I will also solve when I will uh, design the retaining wall. Okay. So, next one uh, I will start the, the retaining wall. Okay. So, what are the different types of retaining wall and how I will design the retaining wall by the application of these theories that I have discussed. Okay. So, ultimately you have to apply this those theories 
to design a retaining wall. Okay. So, now in this, uh, uh, this uh, class and the next classes, I will also discuss the uh, uh, retaining wall design and then first you should know what are the different types of retaining walls. So, retaining walls can be different types. Okay. The first one is the gravity retaining wall, next one is the semi gravity retaining wall, then third one is the cantilever retaining wall. So, what is the difference between these uh, walls? So, in the semi uh, gravity retaining wall, so that uh, no reinforcements are used. Okay. So, it is only the uh, wall weight that will give you the resistance. Okay. When there is the earth pressure, this wall weight is give you the resistance. So, that is why this dimension is huge. Okay. So, that is the gravity retaining wall and then the semi gravity retaining wall, the dimension is uh, slightly reduced, by we had incorporated small amount of reinforcement and then the cantilever retaining wall the you are using the reinforcement and dimension is significantly reduced. Okay. And this uh, as we go from uh, gravity to the cantilever, so you can use them for the higher height of the wall. So, that means cantilever retaining wall you can use for 6 to 8 meter height. Now, then if you go for the higher height more than 6 to uh, or the greater height more than 6 to 8 meter, then you have to go for the counter for retaining wall or buttress retaining wall. So, what are the difference between these two? So, here we are providing some counterfort or support. Okay. So, if these supports are provided in the backfill side, so this is your backfill side. So, you backfill side and this is the free side. So, if it is provided in the backfill side, this is the counterfort retaining wall and counterfort retaining wall and if you are providing them in a uh, uh, this is the free side, then it is called the buttress retaining wall. So, if this support is the counter force are provided in the backfill side okay, and it this is the free side. So, these are for the more than 6 to 8 meter height generally we provide this thing. So, but in this course, I will concentrate only the design of uh, gravity retaining wall and the cantilever retaining wall. Okay. So, I will not discuss about the design of these two types of retaining wall, because that is the um, these two are not uh, I have not included in this course. So, I have included only the gravity retaining wall design and the cantilever retaining wall design. So, I will show you one design of gravity retaining wall and one design of cantilever retaining wall. Okay. So, in the uh, next part that this is the gravity retaining wall. Okay. So, this is the gravity retaining wall and these are the um, your approximate uh, dimension. So, is given. So, for the first uh, when you start the design you should have some guidelines. Okay. So, these are the guidelines to choose you the dimension for the first trial. So, if this is the height of the uh, wall, then d is the depth of the wall below the existing soil, because this is your existing soil, this is the field soil or backfill, this is the free side. So, d depth at least 0 0.6 meter depth you have to provide and base to it this width of the wall should be in between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, but this is the guideline, it is not the mandatory this should be within this uh, line, but the, for the selection of the first uh, dimension you can use these guidelines or it should be or it can be two third of h. Now, this portion is h by 6 and this is the generally it should not be your uh, more than 1 by 30 and so and this uh, with minimum 1 is 0 0.3 meter. Okay and this is the wall weight and I will discuss this alpha and this eta value part, what is these two things. Okay. And this is the P A as this is P A, this, this is uh, the parallel to the backfill. So, that is why it is parallel to the backfill this P A. Similar for the uh, cantilever retaining wall also, these are the guidelines. Okay. So, this, this is the D and this uh, thickness of this uh, slab is h by 12 to h by 8 and this portion is this is the minimum one 0.1 h 0.1 h 
that the range is two third of h or 0 0.72, 0 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 h. This is minimum is 0 0.3 meter and 1 is to 30. So, this is also backfill is your uh, incline. So, it is parallel to the backfill. So, these are the all cantilever and the uh, your gravity retaining part. Now, I will first discuss that how uh, we can use this uh, we can use this theory and what are the design checks we will do for different types of wall. Okay. So, first we will discuss about we will consider a particular any uh, wall. So, I am taking one particular wall and then we will discuss what are the checking we will do. So, suppose we have wall like this. Okay. And this is the backfill site. So, a height of the wall is say h, and this is the free side, and this is the foundation below this portion. So, this is the d. Fine. See, so this is backfill, this is the free side and this is the foundation uh, foundation d so this portion when this is the backfill side so while we will move this direction so there will be a pa will act in this direction okay so this pa is nothing but h by 3 above the base and when this wall will move this direction away from the backfield. So, this portion will generate a passive force. Okay? This will be the passive, because in this case wall is moving towards the soil. Okay? So, it will be it will give you a passive and this will give you the active and if this is the toe of the wall and I can write that what are the forces is acting. So, in the wall the weight of the wall is acting. So, weight of the wall will act. Okay. Now, it has a reaction from the base of the wall. So, this reaction is the R. Now, it has two components. Okay. One is R V dash, another one is R H dash. Okay. So, R V dash is the vertical reaction force and R V R H dash is the horizontal reaction force. So, from this figure, so my R V dash will be equal to W, because W is acting in the downward direction, your reaction is acting upward direction. So, and here R V dash is the vertical reaction. So, R V dash will be equal to W. Similarly, R H dash that will be equal to P A minus P P. Okay, because P A is acting this direction, P A is acting opposite direction. But in during the design of retaining wall, this P P is neglected. Because so I can write this will be equal to P A, because if you consider the P P, it will give you more additional factor of safety. So that's why you can neglect this P uh, P P, and you can design it with considering the P A. Even if if you consider the P A, it will increase your factor of safety. So that's why we neglect this P P. We can design during the design we consider only the P A, but some special cases we also consider P P. I will discuss um, those special cases that when you consider the P P also. Okay, but for this normal design we generally do not consider the P P, we consider only the P A. Okay. So, that is the uh, R H dash. Now, I can write that summation of the M with respect to toe is equal to 0. Okay. So, this uh, if this is the um, 
weight is acting at a distance of a from the toe and total width of the retaining wall is b. So, this one is b by 2 and this one is also b by 2 and the reaction is acting say at a distance of x bar from the toe and this one is the say E, E is the eccentricity. So, actually your reaction is acting from this point. So, and your center is this one. So, there is a eccentricity of this reaction. Reaction is not acting from the uh, center of the uh, wall or base of the wall. So, it is eccentricity E by x bar is the reaction that is acting from the toe. Okay. So, now from the toe the moment we can take. So, I can write that R v dash into x bar. Okay. So, this is x bar I am taking this is R v dash R v dash into x bar x bar is the distance that will be equal to w into a w into a minus p a into h by 3. Okay. So, I can write that x bar is equal to w a minus p a into h by 3 divided by r v dash. So, what is w into a? w is giving the resistance okay? because your earth pressure is p a which is giving the which is acting this direction. So, this weight of the wall is giving the resistance, weight of the wall is not allowing this what wall to wall to uh, move. So, that is or rotate. So, it is giving the resistance. So, that is why this moment due to the w is the resisting moment. Okay. So, I can write this is summation of m r minus this is the overturning moment. Okay. So, this is the overturning moment and divided by summation of the v. So, this is the here this v is or uh, w is only one w I am talking about, but there can be the uh, summation of vertical forces. So, this is uh, different vertical forces. So, this is the summation of vertical forces. So, x bar is summation of resisting moment minus summation of overturning moment divided by summation of all vertical forces remember that okay so you can say the net summation of uh, uh, net moment uh, divided by the summation of vertical moment so this is very important okay so this x bar now this e i can write that e is equal to because from here to here it is b by 2 b by 2 minus x bar okay b by 2 minus x bar. So, now this things is very important that for any uh, retaining wall design your E should not be greater than b by 6. Okay. Why that? I will discuss when I will uh, discuss about the different checks. So, remember that b should not be greater than b by 6. So, E limiting value is b by 6. Okay. So, now what are the checks that we will do for this uh, retaining wall? The first check, so you remember that there should be 4 checks. Okay. The first one that no sliding condition. So, what is that? That means, when this force is acting in the lateral direction, so wall will try to slide. So, there should not be a sliding, no slide, there should not be any sliding condition. Okay. So, how we can check the factor of safety? So, the factor of safety for the no sliding condition will be R v dash into mu divided by R h dash or you can write that summation of all vertical forces into mu divided by summation of all horizontal forces and that should not be greater than 
or uh, that should not be less than 1.5. So, this is 1.5 to 2. Okay. So, what is mu? Mu is the coefficient of friction between the between the wall and base soil. Generally, it is taken as tan delta. Okay? And remember that this delta is the delta of base soil. So, this is the first condition. Now, the second condition is that your no overturning condition, no over turning condition. So, what is no overturning condition? So, when this wall is uh, giving a lateral stress in this direction, so wall will try to wall will try to rotate in this direction. Okay. So, that this that means it can slide in direction also, it can rotate in direction also. So, we have to prevent that rotation also. That means no overturning condition, the factor of safety will be for this condition is equal to summation of m r divided by summation of m o and I can write in another way that that is equal to here for particular this case it will be w into a divided by p a into h by 3 okay for this particular case and again that should be greater than equal to 1.5 to 2 so here also you can write 1.5 to 2 now what is mr is the sum of all resisting moment about tau and mo is the sum of all over turning moment about tau. So, W into A is the resisting moment here and P A into H by 3 is the overturning moment. So, that is this factor of safety should be greater than 1.5 to 2. Okay, so, there are uh, two more checks that we have to do. I have discussed two, uh, uh, two checks. One is the no sliding condition and uh, no overturning condition. So, next class I will discuss the two more checks that you have to perform during a design of retaining wall. Thank you.